For our client today, we're going to do a nice short uh, tapered haircut around the edges. Obviously, we want to keep it uh, soft and feminine around the edges, and we want to keep a nice uh, uh, soft and feminine taper in the back. So we're going to use predominantly a clipper over comb technique. And then on top, we're going to take a little bit of length off, and we're going to use a couple different texturizing techniques. We're going to use a wide tooth a thinning shear over comb, and we're also going to use a straight razor over comb to give it a real textured uh, PC look, and we're going to style it with a really strong paste. Now, um, uh, this client, she has a very, um, it's, her hair is coarse, um, but the color, it's very light. So what we're going to need to do is use a special blade on our detachable blade clipper that cuts and blends at the same time, so we don't wind up with any uh, scissor marks or clipper marks or any type of razor marks. So one of the things that I really like about using uh, the clipper over comb technique is it allows us to control the graduation versus using uh, attachments on and off or metal blades on and off and have it just all one length and blocked off around the edges. So two things, we're going to have more graduation and texture and we're going to have a softer, much more feminine look than if we used attachments. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to dampen the hair down. And the one thing that that's going to tell me is I can see that um, uh, this young lady has a circular growth pattern. So when I do cut on the top, I want to cut against the growth pattern of the hair, against the grain. Okay, so we're going to start out on the top section. And I want to use a larger, stronger comb. And I'm going to use a 6.5 to 7 inch shear. And I want to over direct the hair back to leave it longer towards the front. So I'm going to create my first guide and I'm going to use that as a traveling guide. I'm going to take very small sections. That way I can always see my previous guide in the comb. So as long as you can always see your previous guide in the comb, that means your sections are small enough and you're not going to wind up with any scissor marks or chop marks. So I want to work on getting the center section first. And as you're cutting the top, you always want to be checking the client's face just to make sure that uh, Hair is not falling all over uh, your client's face. And now here where we have a, um, I don't know if I'd call it a cowlick, but a very distinct part, I want to definitely make sure that we pull it back far enough. Otherwise that part is just going to stick up and stick out in both directions. As I said, um, as I said, our hair is very coarse, so it's drying out really quickly. So we're going to redampen it before we use the texturizing shears on top. So I'm going to go back through the exact same steps. I'm going to use a 23 tooth texturizing shear so I can use it a few times. It doesn't take as much hair as say a 40 or a 44 tooth. And the nice thing about this particular scissor is it doesn't leave when you close it all the way, this thinning shear, it doesn't leave a line in the hair. Or some thinning shears, you make one cut and you see where it's thinned out and you see a line. Now I'm angling the comb away in the front to leave more length in front of the ear. And I'm just going to cut straight up. And I'm also angling slightly away in the front to leave more hair towards the front. That way the hair is going to go forward nicely. Now when we talked in the consultation, uh, she said she would like to have the hair off the ears. So I do want to bring the hair off the ears without having a hard line around the ears. So I'm going to pull that ear back. Be very careful of those earrings. But I still want to leave those sideburns, that sideburn area a little longer. So I'm just going to cut it with the tip of the teeth. And that's going to leave it soft and she's going to be able to push it forward just a little bit. And I'm going to come from behind the ear just to clean up that hair from behind the ear. 
Now with the metal blades, what you never want to do is you want to come from in front to the top and from the back to the top. You never want to lose sight of the blade and go around because with metal blades, you can, it's very, you can very easily cut somebody's ear. So now we're going to bend her head down just a little bit and we're going to start in the back. So I have the blade about 45 at a 45 degree angle like this, so I'm cutting and blending at the same time. Are you a member of HowToCutHair.tv? Learn the art of men's barbering from third generation master barber Greg Zorian in full HD, 24 seven from anywhere in the world. Sign up for your free membership and learn how to increase your efficiency and make more money behind the chair. HowToCutHair.tv. lay the comb flat and angle it out and we're just going to leave it alone and then the fuzz on the neck will just get this way with the clipper blade so the key is you know when to leave when to leave when to leave it alone now i'm holding the comb at a diagonal it makes it a little bit easier on my posture so i'm standing straight up and down And her hair is very deceiving. You can hear the sound the clipper makes. It's, it's making a pretty loud sound when we cut. That means that the hair is very thick. Okay, so we're just going to bend the head forward just a little bit. So I always like to remove the bulk first before I go in and work on the taper. So we remove the bulk and we work our way up with clipper over comb. So what we're doing with this technique, with this large comb and the clipper over comb technique is we're taking the place of three to four clipper attachments. The standard sizes are a sixteenth, an eighth, a quarter, three eighths and a half an inch. So that's four to five sizes. This comb is about a sixteenth of an inch, inch thick. So we're starting out at a sixteenth, eighth, quarter, three-eighths and half an inch but we're doing it all in one one motion instead of on and off with all the clipper blades or plastic attachments and again leaving myself room so I can go in and texturize when we're done So now I'm going to hold the ear down with my finger and then when I let go of my finger the comb takes over and I'm angling the comb away from the front so I don't cut a hole into the sideburn and the temple area. So you can control all the different lengths with just the different angles in which you hold your comb. So I'm using the corner of that blade to scoop out. Okay, so now I'm going to comb the top out of the way because I want that top and that bang length in case she wants to wear it down and sweep it across the front. We want to leave that longer. So it gives her a few different options. She can sweep it across the front or spike it all up. With that, 
and in the all the way open position, so instead of shaving it all the way down to the skin, we're gonna be as close as we can, but still leave it natural. We wanna clean the fuzz off her neck without blocking it or tapering it up in deep and real high up. Want to leave it as natural looking as possible. So what this technique does is it gives it a lot of texture but we still want to do it uh, systematically. We don't want to go in and just haphazardly start chop chopping away. And I'll show you what I mean once we get a little ways through here. So if I were to pick it up, you can still see it's straight up and down, but it just has a lot of texture to it. So it's not real, you know, it's not like I just went in and chopped away at it. Even though we took a lot of the weight out, it's still even. So as barbers, we definitely tend to be perfectionists, and that's what I want to see even when I go in and I, I add a lot of texture like this. So you want to make sure you have a nice sharp blade, and <clears throat> the opposite with using a straight razor is you, you want to go much faster with the razor. The comb can move slow, so the slower you move the comb, the more hair you're going to take, the faster the less sections you're going to take, but the razor has to move quick. If not, it's going to pull and we don't want to pull. And we're going to go through this time. We're going to go about halfway down because I want to give a lot more texture on top, but I still want to angle it up just as much in the back as I did when I was picking it up. So I'm over directing the front and I'm over directing the back where it needs to be. So I just see it laying down a little bit in the front here. So what we can do in the front is we can come across and do a little bit more in the front. So this is taking the weight out. But if she still wants to have the sweeping bangs, she can still have them and they're still going to lift up nice and easy. Introducing Zorian of New York, premium grooming products for the modern man designed by third generation master barber, Greg Zorian. Made in the USA and not tested on animals, each of our styling products is infused with natural ingredients and features light, clean fragrances. Our two-in-one shampoo and conditioner is sulfate and paraben free and color safe. Do you own a barber shop or salon, rent a chair or run a school? Find out how we support our retailers with world-class barbering education and product knowledge training. We're currently accepting applications for wholesale accounts and invite you to apply on our website, Zorian of New York. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it all forward in the direction that it grows to get uh, that top layer dried off. And then we're going to dry it from the front back to get it to stand up a little bit.
Okay, for the style, what we're going to use is our Zorian of New York shaping paste. So that way we're going to, by using a, a, a paste, it's going to give it a dry matte finish. So it's going to look very similar to how it does now. Uh, the product is water soluble, so it works best when the hair is completely dry. It has a better hold. It has a very light, clean fragrance, which is going to be just as popular with your female clients with short hair as your male clients. So uh, it's very strong, so we want to start with a, a little bit before we use more. So we're going to start out with... about that much. And then we want to emulsify it in our hands really good. It spreads like a cream in your hands. It doesn't clump up like most pastes. It spreads nice and easy. So what you want to do is just kind of, I want to push it all in the direction it grows. Just use my fingertips to get it in there. And then we want to lift the front up. Just going to give it a little bit more on the front. The front doesn't want to stand up as much on the side there, so we're just going to grab a little more. So again, you want to rub it in your hands good. And then this one trouble area, we want to work with it. So not that we want a distinctive part, but we just want to go with the direction it grows so it's not sticking out. And Okay, and usually you have with this with this shaping paste is very strong, so you have about a 10 second to 15 second window before it, before it um, it really hardens up and takes hold. So I think we got it pretty good there. So we have a nice soft hairline around the outline and on the back with uh, very light colored hair. You have to be careful; we don't have any clipper marks. We have a lot of texture. And she's going to be able to wear it this way, or she'll be able to wear it down with sweeping bangs across her forehead if she w would like to do it that way also. So there we have it, a nice shortcut styled with our Zorian of New York shaping paste.